Hey friends, Dustin here. You're watching the Life of Lynn channel. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. And big shout out to Simply Safe for sponsoring today's episode. Thank you, Simply Safe. Remember, there's no safe like Simply Safe. But more on that in a little bit. Today I've gone a little crazy. Just, you know, stack up the projects before they're finished, you know, and just, you see a good deal, you go buy it. That's fair, right? Friends, what I found abandoned in a field is a classic, well, you saw the thumbnail, 1979 square body Chevrolet. It's a K10 Custom Deluxe. That's a 4x4. She's got the 350 in it. Real excited. I went ahead and went out and got that thing this morning. Guy didn't really want me shooting video in his uh, field there. He's getting ready to sell his house. Just kind of wanted to clear some junk out. And I said, that's okay. So I grabbed the old winch trailer and drove a hundred some odd miles and backed up to it and right on the trailer. So guys, I'm excited to introduce to you our brand new to us, 1979 Chevrolet. Look at that. Wow. It's a K10, it's a square body. I'm really excited about this one. This truck has been sitting since 2003, the guy told me. So there's nothing wrong with it. Just decided to buy himself a 12 valve Cummins and this one kind of just started sitting around. So he parked it behind the shop and then he forgot about it for two decades. It happens to the best of us, honestly. Let me give you a tour because I haven't even really looked at it yet. It's hot, very hot. It's like 103. I'm sweaty just from standing here. And uh, the late summer sun is just blazing out here. This is what we drove up onto the trailer. Sorry about the wind. It always blows out here big fans on over there so that's that's why this thing is a classic and it has a lovely patina don't you think it's been repainted like three times but overall pretty straight it's not bad you know some of the body lines don't line up but just just ignore that check out this truck i've always wanted a square body and i'm not sure why but um they're just cool i think growing up riding around in one on old county roads sometimes. We had one called Peach because it was peach colored. And you know, they, they ride like this. It was a lot of fun. But uh, here you can see some original paint. I don't know. I think this was a white truck in 1979. Painted orange in the 80s. And then the guy I bought it from, he had it painted black in the 90s. There's uh, a little bit of it left. He said he got one of those $99 paint jobs from uh, one of those companies that did that sort of thing back in the day. But, uh, yeah, paint didn't stick very good. But this is this is the whole truck. It's actually not too bad. You know, there's there's some of this going on. Little body filler from the 90s. You know, this panel's a little lighter now. But in general, look how straight this is. You don't you don't see them like this pretty neat uh this tire held air pretty cool and uh my steel wheel looks really good too you bead blast those and repaint them uh four wheel drive i was told it's got the 203 transfer case in it uh turbo 350 transmission and of course a small block 350 huh. fuel filler on the uh, passenger side interesting this tire this one you know, i tried to fill it up but uh, you can see the air, it just right out of there. It says he's got a two inch lift on this thing. So, you know, maybe with some right size tires, this thing would be, be mean looking. You know, a couple extra speed holes back here, working on some future ones. Custom rear bumper. Oh, here's something neat. This is right up my alley. Look, camper mounts already installed front and rear uh cool custom bumper that's made out of the titanic i think pretty pretty heavy duty 
Um, looks like he was not lying. 2003 is the last time this truck was registered, and he had it. Oh, look at all the stickers on there. For a long time before that. And actually, I think he told me he bought this truck in 1989 when it was only 10 years old. So that is, that is something to think about. He's had this truck for a long time. Hasn't moved from behind his shop since 2003. So two decades this thing's just been sitting there, paint just washing off of it. Says it has true dual exhaust. No catalytic converters. Don't tell anybody now. This, uh, this tire actually held air too, surprised. Um, different colored rim, but uh, he said there were some in the bed. Let's look. Oh, also he said, feel free to take my scrap metal with you. And I said, okay, because why not? Uh, but look, we got, we got a rim. Uh, those probably don't go to this. Nope, definitely not. Feeder for uh, the animals. Oh, and a present for my wife. That's a, a metal wagon wheel. Notice the metal plate on the bottom and the angle iron. Well, that's right. That's one of those cool, you put it on your front porch and you build a, a chair out of it, you know, or a whole bench, you know, make longer two by fours. Have that one and that one. So I'm going to put that together for the missus. Maybe she'll forgive me for bringing this home to, to park in the yard. Maybe. We'll see. Bed's real solid. Look at that. Not even rusted up here. Pretty happy about that. Oh, this looks really good right here. Um, steering components. Hopefully they're not from this truck. Probably are. It's got the slider rear window. Pretty neat. Couple of hail dents in the top. Yeah, Colorado. That's what happens. Uh, looks like we got our wiring for our camper. That's all set up. Hopefully that works. A little bit more uh, Bondo up here. But uh, in general, not bad. You know, a couple. Not sure what's going on there. That's a hole. Somebody put a plate over it. The plate's now a hole. Uh, this is a good looking rim, only with missing one lug nut. Interesting thing to note here. Yeah, there's no lockers on those hubs. Uh, this was a full time four wheel drive unit. Let's uh, pop the hood, see what's going on underneath there. Yeah, there we go. Uh, not bad under here. <laughs> a little bit of mouse nest falling out. You'll have that. Springs are getting real stiff. Um, so. You know, it's going to want to bend this hood in half, so we're going to get some WD-40 on those before we close it, probably. Look at this! Look at all the room you got! Needs a battery. But, uh... Oh, look, he's got a, a bungee on there, so that's, that's going to be good to go. Definitely looks like a small block Chevy. Looks pretty factory, other than the little baby air cleaner on the top. Says that'll brock, though. It's got a holly carb on it, so somebody's done some tinkering. You know, it's got these fancy little uh, holders for your ignition wires. And ooh, look at the size of that thing. Let's take a peek at some of the fluids, give us an idea of what might be going on. Yeah. Look at that. Transmission fluid on the dipstick. A little weird colored at the very top, but uh, still red at the bottom. He said there's nothing wrong with the truck when he parked it. Engine oil. Well, you gotta be kidding me. It's full. This thing not leak? 20 years and the oil's full? I'm pretty confident in this thing. Take a look at the inside here. Look at that. Intact. Oh, white truck. This window work? Window even works. He threw in some extra parts he had that are square body related. Here are some fender well covers he told me. So those just screw in to help prevent the uh the rust situation um you know but it's, but it's already a situation so 
Not sure how well that's gonna help. What else we got here? Headlight, cool. Um, ooh, factory hubcaps, very neat. And I hope that's actually a Wii End intake inside the Wii End intake box. That'd be neat. Not sure what's in the warning keep from children box. But uh, let's see what we got in here. <laughs> smells a little bad. Seats um, brittle. About ready to punch a hole through it. How many miles? 13,322. So I don't know if it's 113,000 or 213,000. Maybe 113. I don't know. We've got keys. Is this turned? Oh. Obviously no battery, but this feels like it's going to function. All right. Uh, no AC. It's okay. We've got the best windows ever. Not sure why they ever got rid of those. This is solid. Just whoosh, blow the wind right on you. Nice. No headliner, but uh, visors are here. The steering wheel is physically sticky. Um, very sticky. Not, not sure what's going on with that. It's real gross. Oh, we got a cassette. That's uh, That's been upgraded. That's nice. It's a Sony. Dash is um, not bad. Got a pretty bad spot over there, but uh, we're all pretty good. Hale got the windshield. Got a good crack there. Well, this thing's still in the trailer. I'm going to back it into the shop. Uh, might run it over to the pressure washer real quick and blow off the underside because uh, she's been in the weeds for a while. As you can see, yeah, it's pretty rough, but, uh, oh, it's, you know, cab corners. Locked, of course it is. Did I arm the Simply Safe system? Uh, I know. I'm, I'm just, I'm out in the shop working on the square body. I'm shooting a, a video for the folks. Uh, oh, okay. No, you know what? It's fine. I'll arm it. Yeah, no, the system's armed. You're good. Guys, when I'm out here in the shop, I know the Simply Safe team has my back. I know they're gonna be watching my house and I can arm my system from anywhere in the world as long as I got the Simply Safe app going. I can also watch my cameras, but if I'm not watching my cameras, I know that the Simply Safe team is watching my house for me. And if a break in occurs, those guys at the 24 seven live staff that they have are gonna be notified about it. They're gonna notify me immediately. And if they can't get a hold of me, they're gonna be able to see the perpetrators in your house talk to them and say, hey guys, get on out of here. It's amazing. I also like to just keep an eye on my outdoor cameras myself. They're completely wireless. I can pull them up right here in my app and see them right here in the shop while I'm wrenching away. That way if a delivery driver or something shows up, I can get to my package before my dogs eat it, which is nice. Guys, just because we're getting into fall and the temperature's starting to fall, doesn't mean the heat's not being turned up on crime in some areas. You gotta watch out for that. What if you got a brand new espresso machine being delivered to your house, you know, so you can make your pumpkin spice lattes and, and whatnot. You know, somebody might take advantage of you because they also want the pumpkin spice latte. You know, they see that you got the box in the trash and they're like, hey, 
I'm gonna go into that house and help myself while they're at work. Guys, I'm gonna put a link down in the description below. You can go to the Simply Safe website. You're gonna be able to pick out all the hardware you need, including the wireless outdoor HD cameras, one of my personal favorites, and plus the brand new wireless indoor alarm camera. And that's the one that's gonna detect any perpetrators in your house, throw the buzzers, throw the alarms, alert the Simply Safe staff. So guys, head on over to simplysafe.com forward slash life of Lind. That's where you're gonna get 20% off your Simply Safe system. Plus your first month's gonna be free when you sign up for the new interactive monitoring system with the 24 seven live guard with fast protect technology. That's that new camera I was talking about. It's amazing guys, you gotta go check it out. Link down in the description. Time to get back to this old square body. Just look at the billet grill. Hello 1992, it looks great. Back to busting my knuckles, oh boy. Just a ah, couple more turns. We'll get it, yeah. Good morning, friends. Got the truck pushed off the uh, trailer last night. It's now in the shop. Tires, you know, that one's holding there still. Uh, twisting it a little bit. Got the hood open. Uh, somebody has already tried to taco it, as you can see there. Uh, they've also tried to put these little braces on here, but all the bolts are missing. So one of the first things I'm gonna do is try to re-bolt that brace on there. So this hood doesn't crack and fold any worse than it already has. Uh, gonna get some of the junk out of the interior so I can see what's going on, what we might have in these boxes of parts in here. Um, and then uh, probably dig through the bed here. Just get it cleaned out so uh, we can get to everything while we're working on it. Haven't noticed anything too crazy yet. Uh, under the hood here, let's take a look. All right, under the hood here, everything seems to be here except for you know, these cables don't look really great. And we're missing the nuts in them. Um, looks like we're missing the valve for the heater. That should be in between these two here. And there should be a mechanical actuator or something for that somewhere. Clearly there's no coolant in it, at least not a lot. Yeah, but we can always just bypass all of that. We'll just, uh, loop this guy down to the water pump and then, uh, you know, magically that fixes itself until you need heat. Uh, definitely got some grass growing up around it. You can see way down there. But for the most part, everything looks complete. Uh, everywhere that I look, pretty excited. Let's uh, look inside the cab here. See what we got on the passenger side. Door still open pretty nice. All right. Ooh, we got some good stuff here. Chevy GMC pickup 67 through 87. That's a big variety. Probably gonna need that. Factory hubcaps in great shape. Where am I gonna put all this garbage? Uh, a little full in the shop, you know. I haven't had time to clean. I just stack everything in the bed for now. What do we got here? We got uh, brake lines. Is that what's going on here? These look like brake lines. Not sure where they go specifically on this vehicle. They seem to be matching. I don't know if you need two sets like that. They look a little thin for a, a truck like this, but uh, maybe not. What's, what's in this? This is explosives. Hmm. Let's see. In the explosives box, we have... Uh, Like a flange for the cowl. That's cool. What else we got? Oh, we got one of them little cute little Brock filters. I think these were foam. Never understood the 
small filters. Look cool though. And then, uh, oh, skull cans. Long cut classic. Uh, thermostat. Uh, looks like we got a carb spacer and adapter plate for Mr. Gasket. Mm, ooh, a speaker with a spark plug stuck to it. Uh, and a window crank. All right, that's out of the way. What do we got here? Oil filter, hopefully new. Hopefully belongs to this truck. Heck yeah. Just knock the dirt out of it. Still good. Empty box, okay. Ah, this was what was in the empty box. Got a fresh headlight. Very nice. We and intake manifold, huh? Ah, this must be the factory one. The we and must be on the truck. Wow, that thing was gross. All right, seats, uh, pretty nice. That'll clean up. Uh, not torn over here. Just a little wear mark on the driver's side. Back's not completely cracked or dry rotted yet. It's because it had a tinted back window, you know, saved on a little bit. See what's in the glove box. No, it just falls right on out. That's what was in the glove box. Looks like uh, a sock, uh, some punches, um, and a bottle opener. All right, nothing exciting down there. We'll just add that to the pile. All right, time to start tinkering under the hood a little bit. We're gonna, first of all, put those bolts in like I said, and then uh, take that air cleaner off. Look at the carburetor, see if that stuff's even free. Oh yeah. Looks like that's all working, that's good. Then we'll try to hand turn the engine over, uh, see if it uh, is free. I would assume it would be. It's had a fully assembled carburetor and air cleaner on it, so hopefully that kept the moisture out of the engine. But it, you know, the moisture, it can get in there. There's places for it, so you know, at least the oil cap was on. Ah. And then uh, we'll find a battery. Turn it over, see what it sounds like. Alright guys, got all the spark plugs out. They all look about the same. Uh, a little dirty, got a little bit of carbon on them. But nothing bad, no rust, so that's a good sign. Went ahead and grabbed uh, my little hand pump oiler. Yeah, da -da. see it still works. Uh, got some two stroke mix and some fuel and some motor treatment oil in here. Uh, went ahead and just filled up all the cylinders. We're gonna let that sit for a while. Uh, then we'll hand crank it again. Well, friends, I got the bell housing cover off and uh, got access to the flex plate. I'm just gonna take a nice little pry bar carefully against these teeth here. You guys watch to see if that motor turns up correctly. Oh, yep, there we go. Stuff's coming out. Fluids. Dirt's also coming out. That's interesting. All right. All right. Got the plugs all back in. These uh, 
nice wire holders kind of kept all the wires exactly how they're supposed to go so i'm just guessing that the wires are going to the right plugs because that's kind of right where they wanted to fall we're about to find out pretty soon though put our negative back on i've disconnected the fuel line here from the bottom of our carb uh, i don't want to be shooting gross stuff out of what might be in the tank that's been sitting for this long Fill this thing up all right we're in carb Fire in the hole. Oh, what? No way. No way that was that easy. Oh, go pump work. Fuel pump works real good. Looks like I didn't even look that bad coming out of there. Although I have a giant fuely mess now. Wow. Well, I'm sure you guys saw that, because I saw that, and you're right there. Even better view than I did. Didn't even touch the throttle. She just, vroom, and came to life. That is impressive. This thing is, is ready to go. It even sounded good. I'm impressed. This doesn't sound like a motor that's been sitting for 20 years and was pretty stuck just 20 minutes ago. The exhaust blew out a bunch of, uh, looks like nests of something that was in there, but uh, it came out and that thing sounded pretty good. Woo! The fuel that was spraying out of here looked pretty clear and it smells, I mean old, but not like old, old. When we did that international, the fuel that came out of that was like brown rust and just smelled straight like varnish. This just kind of smells like old fuel and is relatively still clear. The only thing I can figure is the old timer that had this before me put some really high quality fuel in it, maybe some fuel stabilizer, knowing that he was going to park it for a while. Something without ethanol from a, a reputable brand with some stabilizer. I mean, maybe, maybe it would sit since 2003. I don't know. Let's, let's fill her back up. I put the fuel line on it. right there. Uh, we're gonna see if it'll run on the fuel that's still in the tank. All right, let's try it again. friends a couple days later still working on the square body i was able to get to town pick a few things up some important stuff hey right there for example the other thing is down here found some used tires here at a uh, local tire shop in a nearby town got a smoking deal he actually mounted and balanced uh four tractor tires for me um did commercial grade slime in them and then sold me these tires and mounted and balanced them all for $400. Pretty smoking deal. These are basically brand new. Look at that. Knee deep in the rubber. 
Ended up with Milestar Patagonia HTs. Don't know what the HT stands for. Uh, hyper threading or uh, uh, hairy tarantulas. It's probably highway or trail, but uh, either way, almost brand new tires. I guess he told me the uh, guy who bought those tires, put them on, drove about 400 miles, hit a deer, smoked his car, brought the tires back, asked for a refund. The guy said, I'll give you half back. So we got a good deal on almost brand new tires. Really excited about that. Uh, this is where we're at with the square body. Since I got the uh, wheels off, this is the brake situation. Uh, a ton of rust, clearly, but it's not chunky, flaky off rust. So I think we're okay. Should be able to clean these rotors up, lube all this stuff, but look at the pads on this. There is none. This was like another weekend's drive away from being metal on metal. That's 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 real bad. So we're gonna have to redo all this stuff. I'm sure the hardware and stuff's all seized. I haven't even touched the brake pedal yet. Uh, but we did get it running, so that's good. No coolant in it yet. Got to do that. Uh, fuel system seems to be working. Look at this. I uh, took all the stuff out of the interior. Look at this. Practically brand new in here. Steering wheel is still sticky. You know, we're, we're making progress here. I haven't messed around with all the stuff in the bed yet. It's a project for another day. I haven't pulled the drums off the rear here. Brake shoes are probably hung up. It's probably a mess. Wheel cylinder is probably leaking. So today, get it fired back up. Get the brakes pumped up. Make sure we got fluid up here on the top and uh, just see if the brakes stop it while it's while it's rolling up here on jack stands. If they do, um, then I think we're gonna go to phase two, which is just slap the wheels back on it and see if it drives. And if it drives, oh boy, this opens us up. You know, we're, we're gonna do a little extra maintenance if it drives, right? Because then we know we got a good power plant, good transmission, good transfer case. Um, then we go work on this brakes, get this thing stopping like it should. Oh, real importantly too, uh, it's missing a tooth up front here. Um, so we're just, before we even mess with the brakes and make it stop, we've got to replace this grill, you know, make this look a lot better. Because clearly looks are more important than stopping. So that's where I'm at right now. Let's, uh, Get to dialing this thing in, get it fired up real quick, see if the brakes even work, and uh, go from there. All right, let's pop this reservoir cap off. Oh, see what a brake fluid looks like. Whoa, easy now. Well, that's empty anyway. Yeah. Well, did you look at that? Guys, can you see in there? You probably can't see in there. Let's take a look. Well, friends, this thing has brake fluid. Excited about that. Pretty worried when something's been sitting that long. Now, this old guy, he took pretty good care of this truck before he parked it. Let's, uh, I'm gonna pump up the brakes. See if anything squirts out. If it doesn't, we're gonna get it running again. Check out if the brakes work while it's up on jack stands. And we'll go from there. Let's reprime it, it's been a few days. What, how many squirts? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 squirts, all right, one, two. And two down of the neck. Brings up an important question, what are we gonna do with this thing, you know? We're just gonna get it back on the road and call her good, or should we make a, a hot rod? Oh, tell me down in the comments what you think. Fire in the hole!
start taking off like I thought. Let's just give it a little more juice. Carb might be leaking a hair. That'll get her going. Find the whole part too. This small block 350 sounds amazing. Really smooth, no valve train noise, no knocking. Really no vibration at all. I'm excited, we got a good motor here, folks. Oh, look at that. She's cranking. Brake shoes are a little noisy. All right, yeah, full-time all-wheel drive is working right now. It's not locked. Uh, we're open differential. So no spinning here, no spinning here. All right, you guys watch this side and you yell at me if the brakes work. Well, the front's worked, but uh, Backs didn't. It's a neutral. She's just carrying on here. Hey, great news. Transmission's working. Brakes, about 20%. We're gonna check for leaks real quick. Shut her down, cause she still ain't got coolant in her. And uh, we'll be back. I'm satisfied enough for a test drive. Let's get this old square buddy back in the road. Look at the wheels on it. Great looking mile star product on the S. on the ground on good rubber running on its own fuel system let's fire it up see if the trans has the power to push her out of the garage here what a beaut come on now This is what we're looking at. I don't think any of these gauges work. Just put some water in the uh, old radiator from the hydrant. We got power steering. Power brakes are, look at this, non-existent until the last half an inch and then sometimes they just stop working entirely. Got a lot of air in the system. We're gonna have to replace all of that. But transmission is uh, 
functioning. We're running out of daylight. Let's get a quick drive in for the sunsets. And we'll do some more testing later. Oh, just drove into a mud hole, I think. That's all right. Chase four wheel drive. Oops, see, no brakes again. What transmission we got? We got gears. Let's see if it'll shift from first to second. All right, here we go. Out on the big road, on the throttle. Oh, she's got power. Oh, we got second gear. We got second gear. 40 miles an hour. We got third gear. 45 miles an hour. She wanders a little bit. Might need a bit of an alignment. All right, let's try brakes. Oh, first time she's hit the brakes in 20 years. Wow. This is, <laughs> this is amazing. There's a sunset over there. Beautiful. Second gear again. Oh, this thing rides pretty good, actually. Look at this thing. Just pretend she just rolled off the factory floor. Well, guys, after just a couple days' work, I got this old square body back on the road, and I am, I'm just really thrilled about this. I'm really liking this truck so far. It is blazing through the cornfields at 45 miles an hour right now. We are in third gear. Everything's operating smoothly. Temp gauge says halfway. Don't know if that works. Oil pressure says about 40 pounds. Don't know if that works. Voltmeter says zero. Hoping that doesn't work. And a half a tank of fuel. Do have a speedo, seems to be pretty accurate. We've got a transmission that is shifting through gears, a transfer case that is in full-time all-wheel drive, powering everything right now, and a 350 small block that's purring like a kitten on 20-year-old fuel too. I haven't put any fresh gas in this thing. And we are cruising up a hill right now. Wow. Just amazed, guys. Brakes kind of work. Steers nice. Power steering works. And we are driving off into the Colorado sunset. Couldn't be more pleased. Okay. I may have spoke too soon. Little four-mile trip. Might have been a little too much for it. Got a little hot. Yeah. A little toasty, let's open the hood. This guy didn't park this thing with water in it and the blocks cracked and that was the reason the radiator was empty. It's a possibility. We started off pretty strong here, but uh, that's going to put a damper in our plans. Well, time to let that cool off. We'll hit it tomorrow. Let's see what we can do. Alright, good morning. Sun's up. Truck got a little hot last night. Overheated just a, a wee bit. I have deduced that... Deduced? I think that's a word. Ain't no liquid flowing through these uh, radiator hoses. So we either have a really badly stuck thermostat or a water pump that's just not pumping anymore. Which would make sense because I have kind of a metallic-y bearing noise coming from the front of the engine. It doesn't sound like it's in the engine. I believe we're gonna have to throw a water pump on here. But this thing got hot. Also, If you look down here in the valley, 
underneath the carburetor. That's uh, that's not water down there. That's fuel. Uh, our carb is now leaking quite a bit. So we're going to have to throw a rebuild kit on that. But actually kind of felt like it anyway. Seemed like the old power squirter wasn't squirting enough at least. So we got to find out what carburetor that is because that's not the factory one. It's a Holly something. Holly four barrel. I think they're mostly the same. But uh, find out which rebuild kit I need on that one and then we'll tear it apart. I've never rebuilt a carburetor that big. I, you know, I'm motorcycle ones. Little little guys. That one's uh. It's going to have some more springs in it, I guess you'd say. Other than that, uh, it was performing pretty well. Uh, went ahead and rebuilt the transmission. And then uh, making up for my hot engine with a little extra lube in there. Uh, we were going to run it and, of course, change the oil and stuff. But I got to make sure that this thing's 100% before I bother changing oil and, and filters on it. So oil that's in is still good. I am getting a slight burnt smell when I pop the... Uh, old oil cap off so she definitely got pretty warm yesterday i don't think any water was circulating through the block for four miles Oops. so we're gonna fix that up still running good fired right up this morning no weird noises or anything so that's what we're working on i'm gonna run to town see if i can find a, a water pump for a small block chevy should be pretty easy actually i guess while i'm there we'll uh we'll get brakes and and fix those since we seem to be going down the path of of driving this thing. Wish me luck. I was able to swing over to the O'Reilly's and uh, you know get the highest quality parts that man makes. 40 bucks for a, uh, a water pump. Yeah, lifetime warranty. That's great. Heater hose, various other sprays, gaskets, and a uh, carb rebuild kit, which is great, you know. I just warmed it up a little bit because I was going to get the oil out and, um, well, the uh, radiator is uh, doing radiator things and uh, dripping. So, needs a new radiator too, but hey, we got a water pump thermostat for it. Um, flushing the block right now, got some cleaner in it, which is probably why the radiator is leaking. We've uh, removed the sediment. That was filling the hole, so now this leaks. Everything else also leaks. All right, we're gonna drain all the fluids out of this thing. Let her sit for a while, cool off, uh, do the oil change, pull the water pump, thermostat, all that off of it. Replace those, pull the carb off, rebuild that real quick, you know, real quick. And then uh, I did not buy a radiator, so gotta find one of those. But uh, we're making progress. Runs and drives, right? Right. Look at all the room. Man, we got a mess too. Got the water pump off, accessories out of the way. Trying to clean this thing out. I'm gonna have to get the air wand and just try to start blowing these passageways out. This thing is plugged up bad. So I'm gonna run some chemicals down in there. Whole lot of air pressure. Put a rag over it, see if we can just blow all the stuff right out of the front. Because look at our little water pump here. She don't look too good. And look at the, uh, this is actually the intake side. It couldn't suck any water out of the radiator. That is solid rust and garbage. So once I get the block cleaned out, flush it with water again, put the new gasket, some water pump on, bolt it all back together, start getting this thing resituated here. We got to get water flowing through this block, guys, because that's, uh, that's hard on it. Got the oil change done. Uh, you know, put, put the good stuff in it. Shell Rotella. We got that in there. 
Uh, got some fuel system cleaner in the tank. Put another five gallons of ethanol free high octane fuel in there. Trying to get the uh, old fuel kind of stabilized out. I had a little bit of spark knock when you got on the throttle on this thing. So um, hopefully that was just really, really old fuel. I'll show you uh, right where the holly's leaking. Uh, it's just this diaphragm here. Hey, little squirter, squirter guy. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh goodness. Oh, uh, the rest of it seems to be pretty solid. So I don't know if I'm going to do a full rebuild on it or not. Might just clean it up, place that diaphragm and gasket here, and uh, see if anything else needs really looked at. Let's look at the bottom here. Looks pretty good. Yeah, we get this thing dialed in. Let's see how that goes. Hi, big dog. Hello. What are you doing? Good boy. Oh, such a good boy. All right. Got the truck out. I think we're successful in our mission. Uh, other than now that we have cooling pressure, the radiator is really leaking all the way down this seam, starting from up here. So that's going to have to be replaced. But, uh... Everything seems to be going pretty well. Had the carburetor apart. I'm gonna replace that one piece. Everything else looked really clean in there and was functioning. Um, so replace that diaphragm on there. Hit it with the carb cleaner. Pretty much uh, rebuilt that one. Well, should have taken it all the way apart since I had it off, but uh, no, it's four bolts. It's, it's not hard to take apart in the future. Uh, cooling fan is cracked. One of the blades is aluminum and it's got a crack in it. So it's making a pretty awful noise. That's probably going to shoot off and go through the radiator at some point in time. Alternator is kind of making a weird noise now that I've retensioned the belt. I don't think it's too tight. Maybe it is. I don't know. Uh, redo a couple vacuum lines that are rotted up here. So I think I think she's starting easier now, which is great. Still have a major brake situation going on. Sometimes there's good brakes. Sometimes there's zero. It goes straight to the floor and then just nothing. Panic, basically. That's it. Look at that. Runs like a top. All right, see if we can make it four miles. Four more. Oh, mirror rattles, real nice. This could be a daily, you know. I can take this thing to work every day. You know, it's got AC, see? Heat will eventually work. Uh, I'm pretty sure none of the lights work on the truck except for one headlight, so you could be like that song from the 90s. All is good. I can't tell if it's getting hot, but I don't see any steam and the engine sounds real good. So I think we're good right now. Definitely going to have to get that radiator replaced. I'm definitely going to be taking this thing on a road trip here pretty soon catch that one in the next episode. It's found a pond that I've never seen before. Caught me off guard. Stop sign. Any traffic? Lord! Oh, oh! Shutsy back up there, see? Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. My first square body. We revived it, and we are driving it. Sounds great. I'm excited to take this thing on this road trip, and I hope you guys join me for that episode. I'll be putting that out here really soon. And if you guys enjoyed today's episode, please make sure to like the video, comment down below, let me know how I did, and of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. It means quite a bit to me. Uh, big thanks again to Simply Safe for sponsoring today's episode. Head on over to their link. Thank you guys again. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.